Hello, it is Sarah back at it again as a licensed New York City tour guide. And today we are going to be touring another area that I adore that has the most insane stories. Like some of my favorites. These stories are so crazy. I've never heard any other guide share these stories. So you guys are in for a treat. So like my other tours, if you've seen them, I can't go over everything in a short period of time. I could cover downtown Manhattan for hours and a half. If you are interested in learning more, check out actual tour on Funky Experiences. We have tours of downtown Manhattan and they're great. But for now, let's get into the crazy stories. Now you can follow along on your phone from your couch or if you're feeling up to it, you can actually bring this along with you and follow on the map and then look at the things as I'm telling the story directly, which is always a really fun way to do it because then you're kind of like in the moment with me. All right, let's check out the first spot. We're starting this tour in a place of cannibalism. Uh, Wait, what? Yeah, I'm serious. That sounds crazy, right? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you all that in a moment. We're starting the tour physically in Battery Park. This is the spot you come to get on the Statue of Liberty boat. We are not doing that today. I'm gonna share a crazy story about this guy right up here, Giovanni de Verrazzano. This statue is technically dedicated to him. He was actually the first European to discover New York. He got here in 1524. He was an Italian sailing for the French. And if this story did not happen, it's very likely that instead of all of us speaking English, we may be speaking French. However, that didn't work out and here's why. So when Giovanni de Verrazzano landed here. He was looking for a few things, just like most explorers of the time. He was looking for gold. He was looking for land and bitches and bitches. That's right. You know, all the things they were looking for back in the day. He landed here in New York and he said, this land is perfect. I'm going to say this is French land. I'm declaring it. As soon as we get back to France, I'll put in the paperwork and it's going to be official. But first, Let's continue our journey down the US, which it wasn't called the US then. So we continued sailing down until he got to a beautiful area. Today it's called Jamaica. He sees this tropical island in the distance and he says, look at this. This island looks like it has great potential. It could have gold there. Let's go investigate, right? Takes a smaller boat into shore. So the majority of the crew, including his brother, stay on the main ship while Giovanni and a few of his men go to shore. And there they find a tribe of natives. Now, these natives had never seen people like this before, and it turns out they had a special taste for something. That's right. They were cannibals, you guys. Kind of crazy, I know. So essentially what happened from Giovanni's brother's perspective. You could say Giovanni was Jamaican them crazy. <laughs> you could say that. So as Giovanni's brother watched from the ship, he watched Giovanni and the few members get attacked and then eaten. Yeah. That's really what happened to poor old Giovanni. And that's part of the reason why this land was never claimed as French land, because the ship captain got eaten by cannibals. I swear this is 100% true and absolutely insane. Now today, Giovanni Verrazzano, you may have heard of the Verrazzano Bridge. It connects Brooklyn to Staten Island. And that bridge is named after him. It's named after a guy who got eaten by cannibals. Isn't that cool? but this statue has a bit more interesting history and that is in the lovely lady at the bottom. She's representing courage that Giovanni Verrazzano faced during all of that time. <laughs> Who knows what he faced, but courage is definitely one of the things, right? You're exploring the world and you're eaten by cannibals. It definitely takes some courage. If you see statues like this around New York City, there's a lot of them. This was very popular during the Beaux Arts style of building architecture that's generally in the early 1900s. And one of the most famous models, in fact, she used to be called Miss Manhattan. She was known as the US's first supermodel. Her name was Audrey Munson, and she has a crazy story. If you think the Giovanni Verrazzano story was crazy, buckle up. She was actually portrayed in 24 different statues throughout New York City during the early 1900s. Some of the most famous buildings in the city, like the Municipal Building, which she is covered in 24 karat gold. Absolutely stunning. She's also on the New York Public Library. She's at the entrance of the Manhattan Bridge. She's all over the city. In fact, she was also on the Silver Dollar, 
Let's get into why her story is tragic and why her rise and fall were so intensely dramatic. When Audrey Munson was a child, she went to a fortune teller, and the fortune teller told her this of what was to come, freakishly accurate. You shall become beloved and famous, but when you think the happiness is yours, its Dead Sea fruit shall turn to ashes in your mouth. You, who shall throw away thousands of dollars, shall want but for a penny. You, who shall mock at love, shall seek love without finding. Seven men will fall for you. Seven times you'll be led by a man who loves you to the steps of the altar, but you shall never wed. Now, let's talk about it. Audrey was beautiful from the beginning, and at age 15, she moved from upstate New York to New York City to pursue a career in acting. One day, she was walking on the streets with her mother when a photographer stopped her and said, can I take your picture? You're so beautiful. The next day, they went to his studio. He took some pictures of her. He showed those pictures to his photographer friends. They were so enamored with her beauty that they said, can she come back in? She would be the perfect sculpture model. Over the next couple of years, she became the most famous woman in New York City, the first supermodel. She was on everything. Those 24 sculptures that I mentioned, she was at fairs. She made tons and tons of money, crazy successful. But the problem is, like many people that achieve fame very fast, they don't know how to manage money and Audrey was very frivolous. She bought things constantly. She didn't save a penny. And so many men were falling in love with her beauty. It's funny, you know the show The Bachelorette? Well, in some ways, she actually kind of became the first bachelorette. There was a contest that the newspaper put out saying the world's most beautiful woman seeks the world's most beautiful man. And all of these men applied to be her husband and she turned them all down. Now, at the time she was living in an apartment in New York City and her landlord had heard about her and he was obsessed with her to a unhealthy level. And ladies, some of us have experienced that and you know what I I mean it was questionable and he thought what can I do to show to Audrey that I'm the one she should choose I'll do anything for her well unfortunately there was something in the way his wife and so he thought hey if I get rid of my wife would it prove to Audrey that I would do anything for her that I am the ultimate prize of a man because I took the ultimate step that's true, fellas. Don't let your wife stop you from finding your soulmate. <laughs> what the heck? Don't listen to him. He said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to kill my wife. So that's exactly what he did. And he ended up beating his wife. It was very, very violent and gruesome scene. The cops arrived. They found out that the wife was dead and there were photos of Audrey everywhere. And since Audrey lived in the same building, that wasn't clear what happened. There wasn't great DNA evidence or any of that at all back then. There wasn't really good detective reporting or any of that. Did this man kill his wife to be with Audrey? Did Audrey and the man join forces and try to get rid of the wife? Or was Audrey and her landlord having an affair and Audrey became jealous of the wife and killed the wife? No one knew and news reports were everywhere, completely destroying her entire career. And because she saved no money, she had nothing to work off of because she was used to just getting, living paycheck to paycheck, even though she was making a lot of money. So all of a sudden the money is cut off. She can't afford living in New York. So her and her mother have to move out of the city. And soon they're selling kitchen supplies door to door. And this was horrible for Audrey. She went from living a lavish, glamorous life to living in squalor. And so at age 39, she said, I can't do this anymore. I hate my life. And she actually tried to kill herself. Now, back in the day, if you try to kill yourself, that's considered you're insane. what they do? They threw her in a mental asylum an insane asylum where she stayed for 65 years. She would escape occasionally at old age, going around telling people, I was on the silver dollar, I'm on this building in New York, and people thought she was crazy. But the reality is, it's true. And she died at 104 years old, living in that insane asylum where she was buried in an unmarked grave. And that's the tragic, crazy story of Audrey Munson. So next time you see a statue 
like this in New York, just know that you very well could be looking directly into Audrey Munson's eyes. Wild, right? Just to be extra, extra clear, if you see statues like this, it's never portraying Audrey. She's always the sculpture model behind it. So just keep that in mind. It's not of Audrey. It's just a sculpture model representing courage or whatever they're representing. Good? Let's head to our next crazy location. And I have another really good story for you. All right, we are continuing our tour. Next, head to Castle Clinton. It's very close distance from the Giovanni Verrazano statue. Castle Clinton was actually technically, you could say the first Ellis Island. So Ellis Island is where a lot of the immigrants came through to, you know, from Europe to the US. And then eventually they extended it to Ellis Island. And the story of Ellis Island is insane. <laughs> so come along. So today, Castle Clinton is where you can get Statue of Liberty tickets, but originally it was built as a fortress to prevent another British invasion. You remember them? Yeah. So you can go in for free. There's a ton of history that you can read right here, and you can see uh, old cannons and, and all types of Revolutionary War battle memorabilia, I guess you could say. Here, right now, they're doing a ton of renovation at Battery Park, so unfortunately, if you walk in here, you're not going to be able to see the Statue of Liberty from here. Regardless, though, I think you should stop in here and see all the cool stuff. You can see a part of the fortress here. Okay, let's get to that Ellis Island story because that's really the cool thing I want to show you. Because most of the views of the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island are blocked off right now at Battery Park, we are here at the Staten Island Ferry Terminal. This is probably the only place that you can actually see the Statue of Liberty from here because you're elevated and not a lot of people know about this uh, kind of like deck that is at the Staten Island Ferry. So essentially, once you walk in, you go up the stairs of the Staten Island Ferry Terminal and you walk right to the right side and through these doors and you'll get to the deck and right off to the far left corner, you actually have a perfect view of the Statue of Liberty completely in sight. No blocks at all, no fences in your way, it's perfect. So let's talk a little bit about the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island, which unfortunately you cannot see from this view. Ellis Island is known for 12 million immigrants coming through from 1892 to 1954. That's where many, many family members of mine and probably yours came through to the US. And if you go to Ellis Island, you can actually look in their database and see when your family came, which is super, super cool. Mine came from Ireland and Germany. My last name really is Funk, you guys. It's German, so that's where I learned that. Super interesting. But before it was known as Ellis Island, it was actually known as Gibbet Island. Now, does anyone know what a gibbet is? Hmm? Lucas, do you know what a gibbet is? Animal. It's not an animal, it's something a little bit darker. A gibbet is what they used to use to display dead bodies back in the 17 and 1800s to scare people to not do bad things. So why would they call it Gibbet Island? That's so dark. Well, that island was actually used for hanging pirates. It was called Gibbet Island because after they hung the pirates, they would display their bodies on stakes in the ground to scare people away and say, don't be a pirate, don't do bad things. Crazy, right? And that's part of the reason why Ellis Island is considered haunted, despite all the other stories of dark immigrant tales that also occurred there. But we can get into those stories another day. I wanna talk about a story of a famous, notorious dark pirate called Captain Gibbs. Is he more or less famous than Blackbeard? He's less famous than Blackbeard, but I feel like he should be equally famous because his story is insane. This was one of the most mutinous, most violent, most murderous pirates that sailed the seven seas back in the 1800s. Now, Captain Gibbs was hung on Ellis Island, or what we called Gibbet Island, in 1831. And before he was hung, they said, is there anything you want to proclaim over all of the hundreds of murders that you have done? Is there anything you want to say to, you know, speak for the hatred and the negativity and the pain you caused in your life? And he said, I regret nothing 
except for one of my murders. And this is the story of that murder. Back when Captain Gibbs was a younger sailor, he started sailing on the seas at 15. He originally started as a good sailor and then transitioned to piracy over time. And while he was out pillaging and plundering the towns, one day he saw a Dutch ship on the horizon and he said, let's get them, essentially. <laughs> what empire talk or whatever. Ships ahoy, matey. Right. What, what is that, like a Captain Crunch? <laughs> like, what is that? Let's steal all their... I was going to say, let's steal their <laughs> That's what he said. I think he probably did say that. <laughs> so yeah, essentially, they go there, they shoot the cannons, they sink the ship, they kill everyone, except for one person. And that's this beautiful Dutch girl. She throws herself at his feet and says, please save me. I'll do anything you want. Please, please, please don't kill me. And he's like, you know what? She looks good. This could work out for me. So he brings her along on his pirate ship and they literally sail all throughout the Caribbean, along the coast of the US, and he ends up falling in love with her. Like any pirate, they don't really trust anyone, and so he gets this idea that she's going to leave him, and she's going to turn on him, and she's going to tell what he's done. And he kind of starts going crazy with this idea, to a point that he's like, I can't let her turn us in, I don't know what I'll do, I have to end her life. And so he ends up poisoning her to death, but he regretted that for the rest of his life. He said, this was the girl of his dreams. Like he, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I could have just left piracy and just lived a life somewhere else with her. And that's the only murder he ever regretted. And he said it that day, right before they hung him, they said, he said, I only regret one thing and it is killing my true love. So even pirates have true loves, you guys. And then I'm sure they put him on a give it right after. Beautiful love story, right? <laughs> Let's continue. We are leaving the Staten Island Ferry Terminal and walking along State Street about two blocks to our next destination, which is France's Tavern. Great restaurant, even greater history. We are here at the corner of Pearl Street and Broad Street. This is France's Tavern. And this restaurant was established in 1719. It's actually the oldest restaurant in New York City, which makes it very special alone. It's on the National Registrar of Historic Places, but that's not actually why I think this place is special. I like to call this place as where the idea for the U.S. first kind of came to be, and that's because this is the spot the Founding Fathers would meet to discuss ideas on how they could be revolutionaries and form their own country when the British were ruling them. So if you think about it, we essentially got independence starting in 1776. And before that, the British controlled all of this. They would meet at pubs, they would meet at bars to discuss ideas, just like today, you meet friends at bars. And so this is the spot that the sons of the revolution, you see that sign? Would meet, right there. It's on the block, you guys, right there. Very special place. So this is where George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, Aaron Burr, all of them would meet here and discuss the future of America. They would talk about how are we going to get away from the British? How are we going to start our own country? So a lot of interesting things happen here and there's a ton of plaques to represent it. So if you're here in person, check these out. In addition to gaining independence, which we all know we did, obviously, United States of America. <laughs> It's not called Britain for a reason. They also founded the Chamber of Commerce here. You can see that right here. That happened in 1768. And then when George Washington bid his officers adieu after the Revolutionary War was completed in 1783, he actually did it right here. And you can actually see that table that he did that at upstairs. On the lower level of this restaurant is the actual restaurant and they have great food. They have a lot of live music. I highly recommend coming here on a weekend. They generally have live music every single weekend. But if you go to the second floor, they have a museum where you can see all types of Revolutionary War relics. Let's go inside. I want to show you some things in here. So this entrance, you can go through Water Street. Here is a flag from 1776. You can see there are 13 stars representing the 13 colonies because again, this was before we had states. Pretty cool. 
And then above the bar, there's actually a bayonet from the Revolutionary War. And now if you come through this way, this is where you're entering, like it's almost like a different world, all still the same restaurant. This is more like, I would say, it's, it's a bit more upscale, but this is still a vibe, it's cool. So if you go through here, they have a wine bar. I doubt they had a wine bar like this when George Washington was here, but who knows? <laughs> Through this way, there's actually a really cool painting of the city of New York on the entire wall. You see that? And then tons of different artwork on the walls of George Washington, the Founding Fathers, the Sons of the Revolution, all right over here. If you can imagine, back in the 1700s, you know the story of Hamilton, right? How he was shot in a duel? Him and Aaron Burr, that was the duel. They actually had a meal together that day to hopefully get over their issues here at Francis Tavern. Obviously, we know how that ended. They didn't get over their issues and they said, screw you, essentially. Let's have a duel and solve this the manly way. Right, Lucas, the main way. They should have just arm wrestled. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is where Hamilton had his last meal. That's pretty amazing, right? In this main dining area, this is where I recommend sitting because this, they kept like the authentic style of tables that people would eat at back in the day. So you kind of feel like you're going through time here, which is really cool. And then upstairs is the museum. So check it out while you're here. Take more time to look at the pictures and stuff. Grab a bite to eat. It's awesome. And now we're going to the Dead Rabbit was rated the world's best bar in 2015. So that's another awesome place. And it's right around the corner. Right next to Francis Tavern on Water Street. Francis Tavern, the back of it's right there. This is the Dead Rabbit. And this was named the world's best bar in 2015 and 2016, and is still one of the best bars in the world today. But when you come here, definitely get their Irish coffee. It's amazing. I've given tours to a lot of people from Ireland, and they say the Irish coffee here is better than what is in Ireland. It is a modern Irish bar, so. You know, they know what they're doing. But why is it called the Dead Rabbit, right? It's a weird name. It represents an Irish-American criminal street gang from the 1850s. Back in the 1850s, the area that we know as Chinatown today was absolutely filled with danger, murder, slums. It was a terrible, terrible place to live. It was where the poorest people ended up. Today it's much nicer and you can get great Chinese food there. But in the 1850s, it was not a place to be. And the only way to protect yourself was generally to join a gang. There were many gangs. The most prominent ones were the Dead Rabbits and the Bowery Boys. The Dead Rabbits called themselves the Dead Rabbits because it was considered an omen to essentially kill a a rabbit and then throw it in the center of a meeting it's considered an omen that someone's leaving the gang it's like a bad thing so they would call themselves the dead rabbit and if you've ever seen gangs of new york really good movie if you haven't seen it starring leonardo dicaprio awesome that's the main gang that he's a part of when you're here grab a drink do yourself a favor grab a drink it's an awesome spot i am uh showing people the dead rabbit and i think they got the vibe with you guys that's so cool here's a smoothie no we're not the irish people will tell me the truth they will oh, no. top of the day to you we gotta go inside you guys we got we're on a filming schedule no. thank you to Top of the morning. <laughs> I don't know what you say to say goodbye in Ireland. So, so Anya? Is that Gaelic? Yeah. Ah, cool. So on a while, yeah. Irish people are the best. <laughs> They're just like always in a good mood, especially when they've been drinking. It's a flawless combination. <laughs> and again, you guys, I can't cover everything in a YouTube video. It's gonna be like hours and hours long. So if you want to do the full experience, you can book a tour at funkyexperiences.com and we'll show you around. We have a lot of great tours. If you like food, check out our food tours because those are awesome. You get five dishes. I like to call it a, a walking lunch. It's a great time. But check out Funky Experiences for more info. Would it surprise you if I told you that we were actually at a park right now? What? A park with a broken down escalator? That's crazy. 
Well, that's kind of the point of the elevated acre. It's supposed to be hidden. It's one acre of parkland that is hidden amongst the buildings and slightly elevated. Oh, look at that. It's in the name, right? Now, as a normal passerby, you wouldn't actually notice anything, right? And that was actually the point. This is meant to be a retreat for workers in the area. We're in the financial district after all, and so a lot of those overworked office workers need a break. Come upstairs, I wanna show you. I mean, don't we all need a break, right? We all are overworked these days. The elevated acre is literally one acre. It's all vegetation that you'll find naturally in this region. Spring is just starting here, so you're starting to see those flowers coming up. In May, it's gonna be gorgeous here and they have tons of seating and picnic tables for anyone really to come and take a break. But that's not all. They also have an amphitheater here and they do live music. It's a lot of cool stuff going on, plus an amazing view of the East River, the Brooklyn Bridge, the Manhattan Bridge. You can see three boroughs from this view as well. Brooklyn's right over here. Of course, we're in Manhattan. And then Staten Island is all the way over there. It's also a cool place to watch the helicopters taking off and landing right over there. So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this tour. If you did, let me know. If you want me to do more tours, I can do that. That's it. I hope to see you soon. Bye.